Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Um, this is my first video after about two years. Um, I recently quit my job and I have more time to create more content. So this video is going to be about JavaScript animation. Recently, I've been doing a lot of um, uh, animations with Anime.js and uh, I've been writing a lot of content um, on animation. So let's see if you like this. Um, again, I don't even know if anyone's watching this, but uh, let's see what we have here. Um, I'm going to head over to Anime.js website, AnimeJS.com. Um, it's a very cool animation. You can do a lot of cool stuff with anime. Um, it's very lightweight. It's great for mobile, especially. It's like a, about six kilobyte uh, gzipped. Um, so if you click on GitHub, the GitHub button, it will take you to the GitHub page. And down here, there's a link to download the, uh, the JavaScript file. Uh, so if you just click that, you can download it, or you can just download it from the CDN. Um, so let's open this up and I'm going to just copy this file anime.js into our project. So I need to create a folder here. Just call it anime basics. And I need a index file and I'm also going to copy that file that we just downloaded. And let's open this up in Sublime and Let's add some markup. Uh, let's open this up in the browser and let's verify that uh, the anime uh, function is loaded on the window. So if we go back here, I have an alias here set up that um, starts an HTTP server. Let's open up the um, console and I'm going to type anime and down here you can see anime is loaded. So now that we have anime, um, let me show you how you can create a very simple animation. Um, we're going to move a box, let's say 200 or 300 uh, pixels across the screen. Um, I need some markup here, so let's create a div. Uh, let's give it some style. Now we need some um, JavaScript down here. Uh, the first thing you do is uh, you call anime and uh, you pass it a plain JavaScript object. And you first need to tell it what element you want to animate. So you do that by using the targets attribute. You can use a CSS selector or use a DOM node. I'm just going to use a CSS selector to um, target the element with the ID of box. And you can go to duration. Durations are in millisecond. Um, so we can say, you know, to um, two seconds, um, and then here you can specify the, uh, the the property you want to animate. So the one that we want to animate here is the translate x CSS transform. Translate x, let's say you know 300. So it's going to take whatever position that the um, element has on the page, and it's going to uh, animate it 300 pixels more. So um, if it's at position zero, it's going to move it uh, 300 pixels to the right. So let's go back here and let's see. And there is the animation. Um, it plays around two seconds. Anime by default animates values um, with an elastic function. That's why you see this, uh, you know, this little kind of kind of motion. It goes and it goes back. If you if you want to change it to a different um, easing function, you do that with with easing with the easing property. You can use um, you know linear for example. Then it's going to you know linearly change the value. Um, easing functions are pretty useful for creating um, you know very dynamic animations. Um, I can show you later if you're interested. But um, you can see a lot of predefined easing functions here. Um, and each of these um, keywords here, you know, quadratic, cubic, these are all uh, mathematical functions. So like this one is uh, exponential, this one is sine. Um, so if you want to, for example, look at how the sine, the sine easing function looks like, you can look at the easy, you know, sine function. Uh, you know, sine, sine function basically looks like this. You know, values go, you know, up and down, up and down. Um, so if I go back here, and if I pick ease in sine, and I change that to ease in sine, we can compare it to the uh, previous linear one. 
as you can see, it starts slow and then it speeds up. Um, you can also make it slow down at the end, so you can do it with the ease in out sign. Basically says start slow, go, to, go linearly and then slow down. And that's what's happening down there. Uh, you can see it a bit more obvious. It's more obvious if I reduce the duration. You can see it's slow, slowly starts. That's how things in the real world, you know, um, you know, move around. You know, they don't. You don't see a car just, you know, linearly, you know, moving around. You see them, you know, accelerate. They slow down and so on. So it's great for um, creating more realistic animations. Anime has a lot of great features. Um, you can create very complex animations with a lot uh, with minimal code. It handles a lot of, uh, you know, um, taking care of. It takes care of all the uh, request animation frame, you know, handling timing and all that. Um, so let me show you another, another example. Let's say if you have like two boxes on a page or, you know, three or whatever number of boxes you have or elements. Let's give it some, you know, class that we're only, we're only going to target in JavaScript. Instead, here I can say target all the class, all the elements with the class of JS box. So it's going to animate all of them. And that's pretty convenient to do. Um, I think I made a mistake here. Let's see what's wrong. Uh, so we have JS box. Well, we gotta give it a update. This guy here. As you can see, all of them are moving. Let's give it some margin so we can see, you know, where they separate. Margin bottom like five pixels. As you can see, all of them are moving at the same time, and you can create delays, for example, or you can control uh, have you can have a little bit more control in each of the boxes. Um, because each of these elements get an index, so the first one is at index zero, second one is index one, and the third one is index two. So, for example, if you want to create a delay or change any of the properties, you can pass it a function, and then using that function, you can have more control over each of these boxes. Um, so let's you know use delay. Delay is one of the animation properties that you can uh, control. And if I pass it a function, the first argument is the element, is the DOM node itself. The second parameter, sorry, the parameter, the second argument or the parameter is uh, the uh, the index. And here uh, we can tell it to return um, a value depending on the index. So if you just you know do something like i times hundred, it's going to give it a different uh, delay for each element. So it looks like this. Each element, each box will get a delay of around um, 100 milliseconds. Let's put on a loop so we can just see it for, you know, for fun. There you go, in this loop. Um, you can also, for translate or any other property, you can pass it a function. For mo most of them, you can pass it a, f uh, pass a function. So let's give this guy a function as well. Again, the first one is a DOM node. Is the DOM node? The first argument is a DOM node. The second one is uh, the index of the box or the element that you're animating. Um, and here we can say, depending on the index, change the you know, translate x differently. Um, so we can say i times, let's say, 100. So it's going to move the uh, the first box 100, the second one, hun um, first one 0, second one 100, and, and, the, and, the, and the third one 200. Uh, as you can see, you know they move a little bit differently here. Um, Anime also allows you to create uh, keyframes. Keyframes are um, very powerful uh, for creating more complex animations. For example, if you want to move a box to the right and then to the bottom and then to the left, you can use keyframes. So for that uh, animation that I described, you need to have keyframes for translate X and also translate Y uh, properties. Uh, so let's do that. Let me get rid of here. The way uh, you define keyframes is by using an array. You define an array and then you pass your keyframes here as objects. They're just plain out JavaScript objects. Let's say um, we want two keyframes here and we also want the same for translate Y. We just want to have two frames, you know, move it to the right and then to the bottom. Let me just copy paste that there and then I'm just going to change this to Y. Each of these objects will need a property called value, and that's the uh, you know equivalent to the value that you're animating. 
And what's great about anime is that you can also specify relative values. So if your box, for example, on the page moves like, you know, 100 pixels to the right, and you want to move that box from that position 100 pixels more or less, you can use relative values. Um, and I'll, I'll show you how, you to, how to do that. All right, so we have two keyframes here for uh, both X and Y positions. Um, so the first for the first keyframe, we're going to make the um, box go 100 uh, to the right. And at the same time, its Y position is 0, so the Y is not moving. And in the, in the second frame, the X is 0 because it's not moving horizontally. And we're going to move it down. So we're going to move it 100 pixel down. Um, so let's see how it looks like. You see, they all move to the right and then go down. It's a little bit easier to show with one box. So let me get rid of these two boxes here. Goes right and then goes down. Now, the reason that it goes this way and it doesn't go you know, straight down is because uh, we're now using a relative value. So it's getting confused in terms of um, the Y position. So it's moving it to the right, but then it's going to move it back to zero in terms of uh, for its X position. So if we change um, if we change this one to a relative value, we're going to say don't move it to zero, don't move it to anything. You can see the X um, it, it it maintains its current position at the um, first X position. I know it's a little bit confusing. I can explain it more if you have questions, but basically that's that's how you can create animations with keyframes. Um, I think that's it. Um, I don't want this video to get too long. And um, you know, let me know what you think. Uh, do you do one more videos like this for anime? Uh, you can anime has also a timeline, a timeline feature that allows you to combine multiple animations. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.